Have you ever found yourself getting upset because things are not going your way and things are not according to your expectations and your desires and that you can become upset with God and with Jesus and you can even get angry about the situations? If you have those feelings sometimes, I want to assure you this evening that you're in good company because that was the experience of John the Baptist. John the Baptist had gone out with a, re with a conviction that Jesus was the Messiah. And he had preached and tried to prepare the way. And he had pointed to Jesus and said, there's the Lamb of God. And he encouraged his disciples to follow Jesus. And then John ends up in prison. And there he is in prison because of his ministry and his strong commitment to preach repentance. And in prison, he hears what Jesus is doing. And John, very honestly, is disappointed. John is disappointed because he had a different idea of how the Messiah was going to manifest himself. He had a different idea of how Jesus should act. And that's the reason why he sent some of his disciples to Jesus and said to them, and it's kind of phrased nicely in the gospel, are you the one who is to come? Or should we look for somebody else? John was saying, you're not doing it my way. And that's the attitude we can have sometimes with God. You're not doing it my way. And therefore, I'm frustrated with you, God. I'm upset with you. And I know some people who write God off because of that and how tragic that is and how sad. And Jesus responds and says, you know, look at what I am doing. No, I'm not coming in on the great white horse with my big army to destroy the Romans, which maybe is what John expected. He expected some great dramatic entry of God into the world to the Messiah. And Jesus said, no, that's not the way I'm going to do it. I'm fulfilling some of those prophecies, yes, but no, it's not going to be according to your mindset, John, but rather it's going to be through the cross, through suffering, through death. That is how I will bring about salvation and usher in the kingdom of God. No, no, what John's response was that, but we know that he certainly was martyred for his faith as he was beheaded by King Herod. But that realization for all of us is that God will not always act according to our expectations, according to the way I think God should act. But God has made promises to us that he will act, that he will be with us, and that he has challenged us to truly have faith and trust in his eternal providence. God does not work in the short terms in which we live, but rather live, works in terms of eternity and eternal life. And that's one of the things he says even about John the Baptist there at the end of the gospel. He says, you know, among all those born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. He gives that beautiful compliment to John the Baptist. But that next line is the crucial one for us. But the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. The least. We are all in the kingdom of heaven through God's action within our life, through our baptism into Christ Jesus. We have been initiated into the kingdom of God. And yes, we don't experience the fullness of God's kingdom now that really is reserved for eternal life but we are living in the midst of the kingdom now. And we are called to recognize the tremendous dignity that we have and the great promise and hope that lives within us. And yes, God may not do it my way, but God will accomplish his purpose, just as he did through Jesus in his death and resurrection, his ascension into glory. God will conquer God will spread his kingdom. It is but for us to have faith, to have patience, and to grow always in love.